Part 2, Reader Comment, This will be a grieving process like a death in the family. You will go through many stages, the triggers will hit constantly. It gets better I promise. When I shifted from shock and sadness to anger it really pushed me forward. You don't want to stay in anger but it really lets you see everything with clarity. This is a crazy emotional roller coaster we are all riding. Best wishes to you. Original poster, I appreciate the thoughts. Haven't been in a great place today. My thoughts have turned back to the fact that I never had a chance to save this. And that goes back to before the affair when she claimed she was unhappy but never verbalized it. There was still so much good there at the time and I would have moved heaven and earth working on communication, going to therapy etc anything. I'm a pretty quiet person, who will fully admit I'm not the best at verbalizing feelings. I had accepted that we didn't have the level of intimacy we'd had earlier in our marriage, and I was okay with that because I loved her so dearly and understood true love transcending those things. I'm really missing that woman today. Reader comment, responding to your comment as quoted my thoughts have turned back to the fact that I never had a chance to save this, and that goes back to before the affair when she claimed she was unhappy but never verbalized it. I understand. I also felt that I was being blamed for his unhappiness without having been given the chance to address our issues. I thought that if I had known how he was feeling, I could have prevented him from going down that path. It took me a long time to realize that I couldn't have fixed anything. Those feelings of unhappiness and restlessness and not being appreciated were a sort of revisionist history that he attributed to me and our marriage after he had begun his BS. He recognizes that now too. Original poster, thanks. My next door neighbor and I were talking this evening and he said nearly the exact same thing. He was also a victim of his first marriage ending because of his wayward wife affair. I'm gaining so much insight both here and in all the people I've leaned on over the last several weeks for support. It really is amazing how many of these situations follow the same playbook. Reader comment, like others said most of that unhappiness she has now expressed is revisionist history. Don't blame yourself for not noticing because it wasn't reality at the time. Only after when looking for reasons for the a does suddenly minor issues, or non-existent ones, get blown up to major failings in your marriage. None of us are perfect, but none of us are as anywhere close to as bad as the wayward believes as a rationale for the A. Keep walking your path out of infidelity. It does get better. Original poster, agree. She never mentioned anything concrete and couldn't really verbalize what made her unhappy. Reader comment, this affair is much longer than you assume. She has been cake eating for a long time until the situation is suitable for leaving. The on divorce may be linked to this affair. Not to say anything negative but to me you seem to be somewhat the meek partner in this marriage, and she took advantage of it. Maybe the OBS already knew of the circumstances related to their divorce. Hope your adult children are not happy about it. Whatever, the past is gone. Be more proactive. With her attitude I feel you should forget about any reconciliation and work towards getting the best deal for you. Regarding the difference between attachment and love, please check what Ven. Tenzin Pomo Jetsima says about it in YouTube. It helps. Good luck. Every end is a new beginning. Be strong about leading it. Original poster, from an e-perspective you may be correct on a lower level, no argument. They did work together for a long time. The reason I believe it didn't really go further then was with our kids being around. I travel extensively for work, which gave her all the opportunity she needed over the last few years to sneak off with him while I was away and the next was empty. There was just no window back then for when she wouldn't be home with the kids. Her other piece of cover over the last few years I think has been her spending time with her friends, which quite frankly she rarely did lead up to this. Agree that this is a pointless endeavor to get to the how and why. I actually sat down and made a list of her good and bad qualities, and it was quite eye-opening. The imbalance was pretty bad to the ugly side, a lot of which I glossed over in the past because it wasn't directed at me, and obviously some of the bad ones were new revelations. Reader comment, brother so sorry for your SHT show that has become your daily life. I believe your youngest hit the nail on the best calling her to her faults as a hypocrite. Do as I say not as I do. Remember she has moved on, monkey branch to her 20-year co-worker. I am sure the relationship went way longer than just a few months. Every day her AP is late she will be thinking is he banging the new co-worker. Every time she is stuck in traffic, he will be thinking is she at the same park that we used to hook up at. What a relationship founded on betrayal and lies. Support to you and the boys. They are adults but are hurting big time. STBX never stepped up when she was unhappy, what are you a mind reader? One day at a time and get tested for STDs and STIs. Original poster, thanks man I appreciate it. I'm so fortunate to have such strong men as sons. They are hurting, big time. Take everything else out of it. How does a cheater throw such a bomb into a family and not expect even adult children not to suffer as a result? No matter what eventual place her relationship ends up with them it truly is ruined forever. I can't imagine doing anything that would cause so much hurt to my children and such a loss of their respect for you as a parent. 
Reader comment, for all the details it seems stacks are placed not in her favor. He may be in for her money and looks so age is another factor because at this age it is the love and care, and not physical attraction that counts and from what is described he is an opportunist, and normally such people do not have lot of empathy in the long run. And as mentioned she will find sneaking around is whole another game than living together. If I were you, I would be certain that there is no going back despite the sudden emotional impact. Keep your head up, do your other things like the job even better, work out, keep talking to people who care about you. Do not tell her that you are feeling bad. It makes her happier in the affair knowing that the BS is still interested in her. It is attractive to function productively in the face of distress. Even adversaries like wife's notice that. Reader comment, I agree the last thing she wants is to see you do better without her. She is rooting against you, and when you show emotion or sadness it assures her you will be waiting. Becoming self-confident and having a DGAF attitude will be a threat to her. Ask me how I know, been there done that. Original poster, I'm working very hard at showing a solid front and staying strong. I've slept a bit better this week which has helped my demeanor as I have a lot more energy. Only communicating via email helps as well, though I do have to meet her in person later next week at the bank to get her off the joint checking account as we both have to sign the form in person. Reader comment, I am very sorry for all that has happened to you. It's awful, awful, awful. You show incredible strength and wisdom in the way you are dealing with the situation. Continue to stay strong and lean on your friends and loved ones to support you through this journey. Original poster, my support system has been amazing to this point, and I'm thankful for all of them. Reader comment, at the bank, ask if there are any joint cards, debts, accounts, whatever, that you might both be accountable for. Ask them what the process is to ensure that your name is taken off any such items fully and finally. In do-it-yourself divorce I think this can be the biggest loophole. You and wife get a credit card, maybe even just a store card. You both sign for it and she signs on the dotted line without either of you reading the fine print. She uses the card for a couple of years previous to you two divorcing. In the D process she agrees to keep that card and honor any debt. Only, she doesn't. Four years later you get a letter and a phone call from a collections agency. They don't give a hoot that the D papers say it's her obligation to pay, they have a legal claim on you. All the divorce contract does is enable you to sue your ex for payment, with the required cost, hassle and problems. Detangling a long-term marriage is complex. Even if you two don't have separate attorneys then do have one finish whatever agreement you two reach. They have the knowledge to spot issues like the one I mentioned. Original poster, good points, thanks. Reader comment, Opus how are you doing? Original poster, not great thank you for asking. It's been a rough week and I've been feeling rather depressed over all of this. I'm sleeping slightly better with medication, but still not what I need. Still having trouble focusing on work too. I do have my first IC session tomorrow, so it will be good to talk to someone independent of the situation. As amazing as my sons have been I am avoiding burdening them with my thoughts. I did spend a couple hours yesterday with my best friend of over 35 years, who was my best man at our wedding. It helped my day. My older one did get a text from wayward wife the other day, I miss you, I hope you're doing okay. His reply, you're not my concern right now, my father is in incredible pain. Love that kid. Reader comment, your story is almost identical to mine. Our kids are 24 and 22 though. You stated earlier, haven't been in a great place today. My thoughts have turned back to the fact that I never had a chance to save this, and that goes back to before the affair when she claimed she was unhappy but never verbalized it. There was still so much good there at the time and I would have moved heaven and earth working on communication, going to therapy etc anything. I'm a pretty quiet person, who will fully admit I'm not the best at verbalizing feelings. I had accepted that we didn't have the level of intimacy we'd had earlier in our marriage, and I was okay with that because I loved her so dearly and understood true love transcending those things. I'm really missing that woman today. In my case I know I do not have all of the story. Without knowing that I am not sure at what point I would have jumped in to move heaven and earth or even when in that 30 years that would have been. The final point I get to be what I would be trying to save. The conclusion I have come to is that the spouse I am missing was never there to begin with. The real one is the one that is living outside of the house. Meaning, that spouse was all in my head. There are too many events, times, thoughts and emotions over 30 years to pick apart and ruminate on. I am not sure how fruitful much of that will be. Unfortunately, those are the things that bump around in my head these days. Peace to you. Original poster, thanks man. This is the conclusion I have reached as well. Yes, I saw things over the years, but they all seemed minor at the time, and most of it was directed external to us. I have more clarity now, but unpacking 30 years of memories and wondering just how much of that was a lie is tough. Reader comment, I know how bad it seems, but as a positive, let me congratulate you on raising a fine son. 
kudos to you. Original poster, thank you. Actually, two of them, and they've done more to keep my head above water through this than they will ever know. Reader comment, your older son's response to your wayward wife's text is awesome. I hope your wayward wife realizes the devastation she has caused you and your children and has deep remorse. Good luck with I see. Things will get better. Hang in there. Original poster, she doesn't have a clue. It's actually scary to see how little she has reacted to this. No regret, no remorse, no shame. Maybe someday. To lose those two amazing men from my life would utterly destroy me. Reader comment, besides your wife being a cheater she's a coward. She sent a text to your son, and she thinks that is, okay. I don't understand how that thought process could even work, not pick up a phone and hide behind a text for throwing a bomb bomb into your family's life. Shaking my damn head over that one. Woman face bombing. I'm sorry for you and your sons. You all deserve better, but I guess you should not expect miracles from her. How sad. Original poster, well, she knows they are not going to answer a call from her anytime soon. We are five weeks in, and they have no plans to speak to her at all. I don't understand has become the mantra of my life through all of this. I do have to meet her tomorrow at the bank to get her removed from our joint account. It has to be done in person by both of us together. Not looking forward to it but I'm going to give her nothing in terms of any kind of emotional reaction. I'm ready. Thanks for all the thoughts on today everyone. Well things didn't go exactly as planned today and the outcome was a bit different than expected. Everything went okay with the finance thing, and she did briefly come by the house to pick up some things. I was very calm but did engage in some limited conversation. I'm going to stay in the house for at least the next 6 to 8 months or until I decide whether to keep it or not. In the context of the house, I mentioned that the boys were happy that home was still there for the for holidays. She said it would be nice if the four of us could get together for Christmas at the house. I about fell out of the chair. I calmly told her you are either in my life as my loving, faithful committed wife or you are completely out of my life so I can move forward and heal. We know she has already not chosen option one from that list. So no cake eating. She started crying with that one big time. I said nothing. Since Om is Jewish no Christmas celebration over there. She loves Christmas too. I think the veneer is starting to crack a bit and she is realizing just how badly she screwed this up. I can't believe she thought she could have it both ways and yeah, I know that's right out of the cheater handbook. It's just that she was so final the way she departed a month ago. Lover boy is going to have his hands full tonight. She did tell me she is going to start therapy. Good, I hope it helps her. Today didn't really change anything in my mind, but it did help my psyche. I am going to continue on my path forward doing what is best for me. What it did was put me back in control of the situation which I attribute to the way I approached her today. I was very calm and measured and she really cracked with the whole friends, Christmas thing. I think it did open her eyes a bit, which is good. Maybe it will help her find a way forward with our sons. In other news, my first IC session was today, and it went well. I did most of the talking today to lay out the background on things. My therapist did comment that the way this has developed and way Ward Wife's actions are very unusual and not the normal progression of things, since I told her that was one of my biggest struggles trying to process this mess. She does know my ultimate goal and all of this is to get me in a better place. Reader comment, just leaving my thoughts of support. The way you have handled things have been inspirational. The way you have taken largely the high road is also commendable. Keep moving like this. Your future forward will largely be affected by your progress out of this. Keep boundaries, strategies in place to keep you separate from all adverse influences. Work harder on achievements that will enhance your life. Set big goals. Original poster, thanks, appreciate it. Reader comment, unlike the IC I actually think your wife's requests, and behaviors are typical of the wayward wife. One thing being on this forum gives us is that over time we see patterns. Patterns aren't determined behaviors, but more a trend that indicates that if researched one could find probabilities of behavior. Like I am fairly certain that by exposing an affair the pattern we have seen here indicates that about 8 out of 10 affairs ends. Another pattern indicates that probably a third of them restart in some form. These patterns need to be handled carefully, because not all affairs end with exposure and not all affairs restart. It's simply a pattern, an indication. Sort of like you might take your raincoat if you see grey clouds gathering because it's likely to rain. The good thing about these patterns is that we can act in ways that improve our odds in reaching our goals. One pattern I have seen is the importance the one in the wrong or the initiator of the change places in remaining friends. In this case your wife. She really envisioned this world where you would accept, she divorced and had her lover remain friends, the family would all accept the change and all that. Who knows, maybe you and her new man could become golfing buddies. This behavior tends to extend into keeping family events like holidays, 
Thanksgiving and Christmas. Go read the divorce forum and within the first five pages you will see threads that are exactly about that. How to deal with holidays, with suggestions from the ex that they be spent together. I think your reactions were spot on. I think a clear message that you are going your path no matter what a good message is. If you want a shot at reconciling, then it's fine to let her know that you are getting out of infidelity and leaving her behind. If she wants you to wait, the first requirement is that she ends the affair and then follow up with some actions that allow you to justify you pausing for her to catch up. Look, we are dealing with now. For now, it's best to be as separate as possible. And see and all that. The future might be different. I don't necessarily envision you two as grabbing coffee in five years from now, but I would hope that if one of your sons marry, he doesn't have to choose if he has mom or dad at the ceremony. I would hope for both of you that if this ends in divorce, then over time you two find some amicable way to coexist. Original poster, my family is absolutely shocked that she would think this possible. I think this goes hand in hand with the lack of guilt, shame, remorse, she doesn't truly believe she's in the wrong here. My youngest said it yesterday, it's one thing to have an affair and have the D-Day moment, confession, but to double down on the action by immediately moving right in with Om without even batting an eye or bothering to try to make any changes really has him disturbed. We'll see. That point is a long way off for me as I need to fix me first and that is going to take a long time. The utter lack of any contrition or shame is becoming a real stumbling block in that direction for me. Reader comment, I think I agree with you that focusing on the AP is not helpful, but there is still a grieving process that needs to be worked through, otherwise you end up emotionally stuck. Original poster, agreed. I'm still all over the roller coaster of emotions. My worst part of the day always seems to be in the morning, because I am an absolute zombie from lack of sleep, even after my doctor doubled my sleep medication dose. Not much else to report, other than that I just filed. I had one email exchange with her last week about her coming by the house to pick up most of her remaining things. She's doing that while I'm traveling this week for work, so and see there. Our son still haven't spoken to her yet. My youngest said he might reach out soon. He envisions going forward seeing her now and then for a neutral site dinner, and he's not going to share as much of his life with her as he once did. My oldest is still unsure what he's going to do. Her parents have basically told me they are done with her. Her mother said, she's at peace with her decision. Of course, wayward wife has made no real effort outside of a few texts to move forward with our sons. I'd be writing actual letters or showing up on their doorstep if it was me. Anything to try to fix that. Reader comment, I get the impression, I don't know from where, that your MIL find Om disgusting. Original poster, lol. Well, they've never met him but that's probably accurate. I know they're pretty disgusted with their own daughter. I had MIL, FIL over for dinner the other night. We had a very nice time. Reader comment, did your wife pick up all of her belongings? Were you able to get some sleep on your trip? Did your son ever communicate with your wife? Original poster, thanks everyone for the support, I appreciate it. Not much really new to report. Been NC for about 1.5 weeks. She picked up most of them. Still a few things and she'll need to sort out all the china, crystal other crap in the dining room. I don't want any of that. I'm still sleeping like crap. Trying everything possible, meditation before bed, white noise, etc. Maybe getting 4 minus 5 HRS. A night, I'm up to 150 milligrams of my sleep medication, from my original 50 then 100. The lack of sleep isn't helping my demeanor for sure. My eldest still has not spoken and has no plans to. My youngest did meet her for dinner last week. He wouldn't say a lot to me but said it wasn't great and awkward at best. I was glad to hear from him that she's at least suffering a bit. Wasn't sure after D-Day that the woman was capable of feeling anything really. He told her not to text me anymore, particularly with her BS how are you feeling. I had a great chat with my sister for almost two hours last night. She told me whenever I start feeling sad about things to remember all the horrors way ward wife perpetrated against me and to get mad instead. My therapist also told me I need to feel that as well. Reader comment, Opus, I have a couple of pieces of advice for your consideration. First, I was in the same place as you with respect to lack of sleep caused by dealing with now ex way ward wife. Like you, I was struggling on just a couple of hours of sleep a night. I then took an introductory kickboxing class which physically exhausted me, and I slept through the night for the first time in months. I continued with the kickboxing classes which did wonders for my sleep. I recommend doing whatever exercise you normally do but at 110 minutes 125% greater exertion than your usual hardest workout. Second, I fear that your youngest son may be thinking that if his mom can do this to his dad, why isn't it reasonable to conclude that any woman may be capable of doing this to me when I'm older? You may want to talk to him about that aspect or offer to have him see a therapist. Post-divorce, my three kids have all seen a therapist. 
My then 17-year-old son took it hard when his cheerleader girlfriend broke up him because he wouldn't drink, take drugs, and go to physical affair parties with her, and his therapist helped. I was very proud that he stuck to his morals unlike his mother. Original poster, thanks for the thoughts again, everyone, it's all very helpful. The varying viewpoints are just what I need. Reader comment, I want to say as I read through your post you are extremely articulate. I believe when you start dating you will be very successful as this IMO is a wonderful quality. I read something a while back, it made me laugh so hard. I do not know the circumstances of this man's divorce, I just know it was bitter and what he did just made me laugh. It would seem he was the one very hurt and the ex left with AP. He had to pay alimony. He did remarry and he took his wedding picture and was able to use that to create checks for his checking account and every month he would send his ex her alimony check with that picture on it. His ex and her AP did not last. Living well is the best revenge. It is evil, but it made me giggle. I would never be brave enough to do this. Original poster, thanks. It's finding the energy. I'm so screwed up I can feel my heart rate soar just running up the stairs. I'll get there. Thank you. That's very kind. Thanks for watching the video. Please click on the thumbnail to watch part 3 of the saga.